from the NFL. <laughs> so after you. Okay, we are moving into some uh, wonderful time of the most important. We just had Big Phil New Year a few days ago on Nissan One. And now we're working out to the 14th. And yes, at the top of your paper, which I hope is just, it's really for you to take home. And I would really encourage you to go through these scriptures at home. I don't have that much time, so uh, read them on your own and, and meditate on these events and these times that are coming at us. So next Saturday is Shabbat HaGadol, which is the greatest Shabbat, which is for the Passover season. So it's the most important one, don't miss it. <laughs> Um, and that leads us right into Passover. And the following event is Yeshua riding his donkey down the Mount of Olives. He stops halfway down and he cries and he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and, bring, and kills those that are sent to you. Sorry. Oh, I wish I could gather you together as a mother hen gathers her chicks. But you are not willing. See, your house will be left to you desolate. And the desolation of the house was coming 40 years later when the temple falls. But before that desolation happened, the glory of God departed the temple. This house was built for the presence of God. Amen. We're here too. You said it earlier. When we come together, something wonderful happens. God's Spirit is here in a greater way. Yes. Powerfully in a greater way. And uh, the people of God, they, they all began to sing Psalm 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad of it. The king is coming into the city. But before he got to the city, he wept over it. Many did not believe him. Many of the priests did, by the way. And by the time you get to the book of Acts, many Jews came to faith. Myriad. Paul uses the word myriad of Jews. That's a big number. We often think that it's all about the Gentile peoples that came to faith during that time. But not so. Okay, the next event then is Good Friday. There's no forgiveness of sin without what? The shedding of the blood. There's no resurrection. Well, there's a resurrection. There's no resurrection under the life without the Good Friday experience. Wasn't a Friday, but nevertheless. That's the next big event to happen in the list of things. So these are all important. The resurrection follows. And all of these things are what we celebrate. And guess when it was that it happened in Nisan 14? It was in the year of Jubilee. Isaiah 61 tells us. He went down into hell and set the captives free. Hallelujah. Okay, so now let's look at the curtain. I, I, I don't want to know farther back than King Hezekiah. I didn't, I didn't look for it. But it, it, at least at that time until the present day, I don't know if I can do it. i got to lay it down for a second. They use the sign of renting their clothes from top to bottom. The curtain was what? I use the word rent. I like it better. Uh, the curtain was rent from top to bottom. It means mourning for a loved one, mourning for something. This case, mourning for the temple, the mourning that the glory has departed. And as Yeshua's side was torn, by a Roman sword, that curtain rent. For the Jews and for the temple, it was a mournful thing. For the Christians to follow, or those who believers in Yeshua, it was we no longer have a go between between us and God. We can go boldly, you said it last week. We can go boldly to them. But that day, it was mournful. It's been mournful for Israel ever since, and no temple. So it's two-sided. Good news for the church, bad news for Israel. And while the side was ripped, and 
the curtain was split, the earth was split. A great earthquake. Simultaneous events. A 30 ton lintel off of the temple cracked. So the temple also split. Whoa. And the graves were open. Don't forget to look up these scriptures. When you get home and meditate on The graves were open and the graves of the saints. The graves were open. More on that later. All of them. Now, second. As his side was torn. Watch my time. <laughs> Five more. <laughs> oh, no. Then there was severe darkness. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a solar eclipse. We had one not too long ago last summer. It wasn't that dark. This is severe, godly darkness, judgment, and the, the earth cracking and the darkness is a sign. Everything happened. You know, look at Noah's flood. What was happening? Sin on the earth. Uh, uh, the earth changes. We're, we're diametrically opposed and connected. And then the sacrifices were offered. And now all the sheep have been being killed for 24 hours. You three million people in the city. That's a lot of sheep and goats and what have you. So they can't get them all done at this nanosecond. Okay. And then we move on. Who knows what a portent is? <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's doom. It's, it's a portent, uh, uh, an omen that something bad is coming. So from 40, from 30 AD when he died, which is in the Dead Sea Scrolls and many other sources in history, if you want to search it out, uh, there's many people that play around with that number. But it says, uh, 40 years later, the temple fell. And these are the portents that happened during that time. The lots that the high priest would pull out of a bag called Pur. One was for the Lord, and one was for Azazel. The one for the Lord meant blessings upon Israel. The one for Azazel meant doom. Never again, from 30 AD on, was the for the Lord pulled out of the bag. Only the one for doom. The other thing that happened, the red string around the neck of the goat, as his elephant was sent out, always turned right, indicating God had, uh, had mercy on them and forgiven their sin. It never again turned white. It stayed red. Portent of trouble for Israel. The menorah. The top, the middle one should be taller. Remember our uh, Hanukkah menorah has a, has a taller one? Well, the one in the temple has a taller one. And we call it shmash on the, on the, uh, um, uh, 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 Hanukkah one. On uh, this one, the temple one is taller. It's called the Western Light, but who knows why? I don't know. It, it held enough oil for eight days for all the other lamps. It never would stay lit from 30 AD on. They could not keep the center light lit. And who's the light of the world? Our Shinnah's candle. Mm -hmm. And what light do you have shining in you? Same light, right? Yeah. And the gate of the city just decided at 3 a.m. in the morning it would open up. It takes 20 men to open the doors in the morning and close them in the evening. It just kept opening up. All these openings, all these rentings and these changing. And I could go on and on. There are many more, many more things that happen. But this is what's going on. From So the people were unnerved for 40 years waiting for doom. It, it fell, didn't it? As they fell, the, wall, the walls fell, and the temple fell. And I think I'm done with my time. So <laughs> I will just let you take the last page. And I want to tell you about the, the, the uh, dead people there that came out of the saints that came out of the grave. I think they went on when the Lord took, took his precious blood onto heaven, or he did it the first trip when he saw Mary Magdalene 
And he said, uh, she said, he says, let go of me, woman. I haven't ascended to the Father. And I think he took them with him to glory that day. If you ever thought about the people from the cross back to Adam, what was their, what was their hope? Save the one. There's no other way, right? Okay. <laughs> and I will close with, to God be the glory, Amen. great things. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Amen.